Hello and welcome to this video on the difference between classical test theory and item response theory. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods such as structural equation models, factor analysis, multi-level analysis and latent class analysis, but also sometimes about psychometric methods such as classical test theory and item response theory. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as courses that I teach for Quantfish. In this video, I want to talk about something that confuses many people, especially when they learn about measurement theory, psychometrics, test theory, and that is the difference between classical test theory and item response theory. And the reason why a lot of people are confused about this or find it confusing is because there is a lot of confusion in the academic literature on classical test theory and item response theory. In some of the literature, classical test theory is depicted as an outdated or old school theory that is no longer relevant, that there are so say, new rules of measurement that require you to use item response theory, not classical test theory, that item response theory is more modern. It's depicted sometimes as the more modern theory that should be used and that classical test theory has problems and that it should be abandoned. Now, while it is true that every theory has limitations, every method has pros and cons, generally this view on classical test theory versus item response theory is simply not true. You could almost say that it is um, garbage to say something like that because it just simply um, is confusing and misses the main points and that is that there are fundamental differences in the application of classical test theory versus item response theory. Those theories are designed for different purposes and so therefore you could not say that one theory can replace the other and that one is more modern and should now be used whereas the other one is older and should no longer be used because it's outdated. And the reason or one reason why this view is sometimes articulated is that classical test theory has sometimes been inappropriate, inappropriately or inaccurately been applied to data situations, to measurement situations where item response theory definitely is more appropriate, but that doesn't mean that classical test theory as a whole is bad or flawed or outdated. It simply means we need to understand when we should apply classical test theory and when we should apply item response theory. Okay, so now let's get into it and let's start with classical test theory because this is um, really the more um, established or the older kind of theory that has been around for longer as compared to item response theory. So what is classical test theory about? Classical test theory deals with already constructed metrical or interval level test score variables such as test sum scores where you have multiple items that are aggregated to an overall sum score. For example, binary items of an IQ test, an intelligence test that are summed to form an overall IQ test sum score or an average score from a questionnaire where we average across maybe 20 or 25 or more questionnaire items to get an overall score. Then oftentimes these overall scores are treated like quasi-continuous or quasi-interval scale variables. They may be approximately normally distributed and they may have many different values if there are many items that they can take on. So it's often justified statistically to treat them as an interval level variable or a continuous level variable. And um, classical test theory 
delivers or provides methods to deal with or investigate the psychometric properties of continuous test score variables. So for example, when we have an overall IQ score and we want to know how reliable are the scores in a given sample, then classical test theory has methods available that allow us to find out about the reliability of the test score variables by estimating true score, the true score variance component, and uh, looking at the true score variance component relative to the total variance in the observed scores, which contains both true score variance and error variance. And so there are measurement models in classical test theory that can be used, for example, a, a model of tau equivalence or a model of tau parallel variables, tau here referring to the true score variable that is supposed to underlie the scores. And so these measurement models serve to identify the true score variance so that we can and the error variance so that we can then estimate a reliability coefficient. And also these measurement models of classical test theory can be tested to test assumptions about, for example, the homogeneity of a set of parallel test score variables that are all supposed to measure the same construct. For example, intelligence, we can test whether different test score variables meet the formal assumptions of tau equivalence, for example, or tau parallel variables or congeneric variables, and that can be tested then via confirmatory factor analysis. If you're more interested in that, I have several videos and a playlist here on this channel on classical test theory and how to test measurement models of classical test theory using the M plus software. You can do that with any program that can handle confirmatory factor analysis models or structural equation models such as M plus, Lavan, Amos, Lisserl, and so on. So a contrary to common belief, classical test theory allows you to test and falsify measurement models. So it is testable that, um, for example, whether variables are tau equivalent or tau parallel, we can test that with tests of model fit and confirmatory factor analysis. We can study the psychometric properties of our variables, most importantly, the reliability, but also other aspects of test score variables, such as test score or test difficulty can be studied with um, classical test theory, also test discrimination, meaning how well a test can uh, discriminate between individuals with different latent ability levels, how well, so say, can the test distinguish whether person A is better than person B or more depressed than person B and so on. So all these things can be studied with classical test theory, but the key point is it is designed for continuous or metrical test score variables. So when you already have a score that is continuous, when you're no longer dealing with item level data, really classical test theory is not designed to deal with item level data unless you have items that have so many response categories that you could reasonably assume that this variable is quasi-metrical or quasi-continuous rather than categorical. But typically we don't want to apply classical test theory to a categorical or dichotomous or ordinal variables. The variables should be continuous or metrical or at least quasi-metrical and that applies typically to test score variables that already consist of multiple items that are aggregates of or some scores or composites, we could say, of multiple items. And then classical test theory is really useful because it allows you to also determine something like composite reliability, something like Cronbach's alpha. If you have multiple tests that are essentially tau equivalent, then you can use Cronbach's alpha to calculate composite reliability for the sum of multiple tests. Also for other measurement models, there are uh, composite reliability coefficients available, such as, for example, the Spearman-Brown reliability uh, coefficient and others, and also classical test theory delivers uh, methods such as a correction for attenuation to correct um, correlation coefficients for unreliability using a correction formula. So it's all useful for those sorts of things as long as they involve continuous 
or metrical test score variables. And so then this explains the difference or the key difference between classical test theory and item response theory, which is item response theory, as the name says, is designed for item level data. And item level data is typically not continuous or metrical. It is typically binary, ordinal, categorical, discrete, so to say. So oftentimes we deal with binary test items, right, wrong, zero, one, or we have ordinal Likert scale items in questionnaire data, or we have ratings, yes or no, agree, disagree, and so on. And so those are discrete, those are categorical responses, and classical test theory is not suitable for those uh, categorical variables because they involve response probabilities. In the classical case, so to say, for where we would use IRT, item response theory, we have binary data or dichotomous data where, for example, we look at individual IQ test items that can be scored right or wrong. And then the dependent variable, the outcome variable or the item score can only vary between zero and one or specifically the probability that somebody will get an item correct is bound by zero and one. And in classical test theory, we're applying linear models to our test score variables, specifically factor models where we have a true score variable, a latent factor that is linearly linked to our test score variable and that makes sense because the test score variable is continuous and so a linear function where the test score variable is linearly connected to the underlying latent variable or true score is meaningful because we have a continuous score but when you have a dichotomous item then a linear link function between your item score and the latent continuous variable of intelligence for example doesn't make sense because it would at some point predict a solution probability above one or a solution probability below zero which doesn't make sense so for dichotomous items we're modeling the probability of success or the probability of solving an item and probabilities are bound by zero and one and hence a linear statistical model just simply doesn't make sense and that's really the simple reason why we need IRT for item level data because classical test theory is limited in terms of using a linear link function and a linear link function for dichotomous items and also for ordinal items doesn't make sense. A better modeling option then is an S-shaped function or a logistic function. And so that's what's used in many IRT models, for example, in the rush model or one parameter logistic model and also in the Birnbaum model or two parameter logistic IRT model where the link function is S shaped so that it cannot predict probabilities for solving an item that are above one or below zero. And so that's to say the trick is to link the probability of solving an item to an underlying continuous latent variable or true score that is continuous with a, an S-shaped logistic link function where it asymptotically approaches the probabilities of zero and one, but never goes above one or below zero. And so in summary, IRT is just simply more suitable when you have categorical data. It has more, it is designed in a more appropriate way to handle categorical item responses and to link categorical item responses to underlying continuous latent variables. Other than that, the basic concept of IRT and CTT is very much the same. For example, the measurement model of essential tau equivalence in classical test theory parallels or maps exactly onto the rush model in IRT, which is the one parameter logistic model. It has the same idea that different item scores or different items share the same true score variable, except that they may differ in their difficulty. And so that's the exact same idea of a unidimensional measurement model with a single underlying latent variable where the items measure that single underlying latent variable, but they can differ in their difficulty. And so that's very much the same idea. And in IRT2, we can test measurement models. We can conduct chi-square tests of model fit, for example, like we can when we use confirmatory factor analysis to test measurement models of 
classical test theory. And so there's really no fundamental conceptual difference between classical test theory and IRT. It's just that they are designed for different types of data. And that's really all there is to it from my perspective. Other than that, they are both useful. You would use classical test theory when you want to find out about the psychometric properties of continuous test score variables. And you would use IRT when you want to study the psychometric properties of item level data that is categorical. And so according to that, you should make your choice. You should not abandon classical test theory and think that you always have to apply IRT that doesn't make sense also it doesn't always make sense to apply classical test theory specifically when you have item level data then IRT is probably the better choice in many situations I hope you found this video useful to learn more about psychometrics and classical test theory as well as IRT please check out the courses that we offer through Quantfish on classical test theory and IRT, they are linked below in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, and um, also leave a comment in the comment section if you like, and I'll see you next time.